Section 210, finding the derivatives of tangent, cotangent, secant, and or cosecant functions. To do the following problems, you will need to memorize these four derivatives. Hopefully you memorized sine and cosine already. Um, you're just going to have to memorize these as well. Um, it will take some time, but they will come. A little trick you'll notice. Any um, trick function that has the word co in it has a negative answer. For instance, cosine is a negative sine. Cotangent is a negative cosecant squared. Cosecant is a negative cosecant cotangent. So if it has the word co in it, it has a negative derivative answer. So right here, with a minus, we're going to take the derivative of each one by itself and simplify if we can. So our answer to this one, where the derivative of cotangent, if we look at the chart, is negative cosecant squared x. Minus the derivative of cosecant would be a negative cosecant x cotangent x. All right. So I would like to simplify this by pulling out a GCF. My GCF, I see that's in both of these pieces, is a cosecant x. So I'm going to pull a cosecant x out. So cosecant x times what gives us this? And hopefully you can see that would be a negative cosecant x. And then a cosecant times what will give us a positive this? Well, wouldn't that be a positive cotangent x? And that would be another way to write it. Plus, you can do trig manipulation and change it that way as well. Now, um, I'm going to rewrite it for up here just one more way. I'm going to put cosecant x, and I'm going to write this as cotangent x minus cosecant x. It doesn't matter which way you write it, but the reason I like this is I just somehow, for some reason, don't like negatives in front. I'd rather move these if I can, and that is an answer. But again, all these are answers. I just simplified it one particular way. So now we're going to do a product rule here. For product rule, we are going to take the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared x. Then we leave the secant x. Then we put a plus. Then we leave the tangent x. And then we take the derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x. And then we do a little bit of simplification here. Well, secant squared times secant is going to be secant cubed x. That's not a negative, that's just a secant cubed x. Plus, um, the tangent and tangent leaves us a tangent squared x and the secant x. And then lastly, like I said earlier, I like pulling out GCFs. And I see a secant in both these. So I'm going to pull a secant x out for my final answer, leaving me a secant squared x. And that will leave us plus a tangent squared x. And that would be a good answer, because if you multiply this times this, you get this. And if you multiply this times this, you will get this. And there are other ways to write this answer, depending on, for instance, Pythagorean identities. You could do all sorts of stuff to rewrite either one of these so far, but this is just some ways. Lastly, if f is this, find the limit of this. So what is this limit process? Oh, it's that limit process derivative. So really, what this is, if you remember this, this is really saying take the derivative of f of x, which is cotangent um, x, and I'm taking the derivative when x equals pi. So I'm taking the derivative of cotangent x at pi. That's what this limit process is saying. Because we're taking, this is a slope. But when the slope ends up being zero in the denominator, which you can't, but you can with derivatives. Okay, with that said, what's the derivative of cotangent? Well, cotangent's derivative is going to be equal to, so this right here is equal to, negative cosecant squared x. And what we're going to do is we are now going to plug in pi. So what is negative cosecant squared? Well, isn't that sine? So can I write this as sine of pi? And when I squared, isn't it look like that? So let's think about that for a second. Isn't cosecant squared? I mean, it goes to the bottom. And then when I put a squared, isn't that really cool on the outside reading the whole thing squared? And so now, what is sine of pi? Sine of pi, isn't that zero? So what's 1 over 0? What is 1 over 0? That is, or negative 1 over 0. Isn't that undefined? So what is my slope? What is my derivative of this? It's undefined. That could be all sorts of things. Just there is no derivative there. So at pi, there is none. So the answer is actually undefined.
which is an okay answer because it is not differentiable, differentiable there. 